morning, church. How are you guys doing today? Great. Glad to hear one great. Everyone else? How's the weather today? Pretty good? Nice, right? For those of you who don't know me, my name is Javi uh, Castro, Javier, for those of you who speak Spanish and can say it a little bit easier. Um, I'm a chaplain currently at Phoenix Children's Hospital. Uh, a little bit about myself, uh, I came from California. I was a pastor there for eight years before coming uh, to this beautiful state of Arizona where the weather is great all the time, right? Um, and I came here with my beautiful family uh, in the back, my, my wife Monique and my two little ones, the ones that were coming around uh, with a little with a little um, offering for me. So we, we are so excited <laughs> uh, to be here today with you guys. I know normally you have Pastor Gary or, or Pastor... Um, Eddie, right? And I don't have the, the height of Pastor Eddie or the voice, uh, the radio voice of Pastor Gary, but God has called me here today, this morning, to give you guys a message. I think um, you will be blessed today by God's word. And so I want to invite you guys to uh, bow your heads as we open up with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, as we open your word this morning, I just want to thank you so, so much for what you have in store for us. I want to thank you because each one of us is called for a great purpose. Each one of us in this room, you have called for great things. And so this morning, as we open your word, we want to remember and recognize that you want to use each and every one of us here today. God bless your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The title of my message today is, What's in Your Hand? And it's based off Exodus 4, where Moses gets this big calling to do big things. Um... And I, as I work at the hospital and I work with families who are going through really hard things, their kids are really sick, some kids are, are dying, uh, a lot of the questions that come to me as a chaplain, as a pastor there at the, at the hospital is, what does this all mean, right? What's the purpose of all of this? What's, what's the purpose of me being here on planet Earth? Have you guys ever asked yourselves that question before? Has anyone asked themselves, what am I here for? What's, what's the purpose? What, what purpose do I serve here on earth? I've asked myself that many times before. What, what is my reason for being here today? Um, there was a co-worker at work that just went to Israel, and she came back and started showing me a bunch of pictures of, of the Holy Land, right? The place where Jesus walked and did miracles and did amazing things. And um, she started showing me all these different pictures. And I, I was thinking to myself, what would it be like to be born in that era, right? What would it be like to, to be born in Egypt with the big pyramids and, and pharaohs and different things like that? Uh, I don't know if you've ever wondered about, well, what would it be like to be born in a different time period? Let me tell you guys something today. God has you here in 2023 for such a time as this. Do you believe that? That God has you with life right here, right now for a purpose. You are not an accident. You know, I was reading um, on Facebook, because that's where we get all our, our news right nowadays, and all of our information. And I, I was reading on Facebook this, this thing that said, the odds of you being here on planet Earth, of being created, are 400 trillion to one. You guys think those are big odds? You are not here by accident. Do you believe that this morning? You are here for a reason and for a purpose. I came across this quote by a genius named Albert Einstein. I don't know if you've ever heard of this guy. Uh, he's a Christian, and uh, I think it's very appropriate to what I, I want to share with you guys today. Everyone is a genius. This is Albert Einstein saying, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its entire life, its whole life, believing that it's what? Stupid. This, this is an amazing quote because I realize many of us are like a fish we're trying to climb a tree when, when God didn't create us for that purpose. We're trying to do things that are outside of what God has in store for us. You know, have you ever seen a fish try to climb a tree? No. Have you ever seen a fish try to do anything other than swim? No. Interesting that God created these animals and they know their purpose. They know what they're supposed to do. They know why they were created. But human beings, we kind of struggle here sometimes. Sometimes we go through life, life aimlessly, kind of wondering, what am I here for? What's my purpose? And, and we, we live frustrated lives because we don't understand why it is that God created us. Exodus 4, verse 1. 
is the story of Moses, one of the great leaders of Israel. And this, this story really resonates with me. It really uh, drives home the point that I want to bring this morning, that God can use anyone. I don't care if you're little. I don't care if you're older. I don't care. God can use you. And so I, I want to share with you this morning this story about Moses. In Exodus 3, we find Moses at the burning bush. And uh, God comes to Moses in this burning bush, and he calls him to lead a giant nation called Israel. Now, Moses has a lot of questions, as you and I probably would. And so I'm not really hard on Moses when it comes to these questions, because picture this for a moment. Picture someone calling you on the phone and saying, hey, Dennis, today uh, I want you to lead the United States of America. <laughs> Would you have some questions for that person on the phone? Hey, this is a joke, right? This can't be true. So now picture Moses here. He's a shepherd. He's in Midian. He's, he's run away from his home, which was Egypt at the time. And now here comes God, the creator, the God of the universe, in a burning bush. And he says, Moses, I want you to lead my people. How many of us would have questions? And so Moses starts asking, no, God, like, wh wh what is Pharaoh going to think? What is he going to say? What is he going to, what, How? And so he starts asking all these different questions. And so now we get to Exodus 4, verse 1, and Moses repeats this, and he says this. And Moses answered, But behold, they will not believe me or listen to my voice, for they will say, The Lord did not appear to you. The Lord did not appear to you. Now, I find this very interesting because Moses is focused on who? Who is Moses focused on? Himself. He's like, uh, me, why me? Why, how come? How come you, you could have chosen anyone else, someone from Egypt, someone with power, someone with authority, someone, but you, you're choosing me, a shepherd? And so Moses uh, asked this question, you know, like, hey, God, they're not, they're not going to believe me. Can you show me something more? Can you, can you prove that, that I, I'm, I'm meant for this? You know, one of the things I love about God is that he uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. That's what I love about God. That's why I'm a pastor. That's why I'm a chaplain. Not because I have the abilities, not because I'm good, not because I'm, I'm perfect, but because God uses ordinary things to do extraordinary things because we serve an extraordinary God. And so here we start off with, with this story, and God could have used anyone, but he chooses Moses. And you know, actually, you know what? I'm going to skip back a little bit. If you guys can go to verse 2, 4, 2. I think I missed it on the slide. So forgive me for that one. So Exodus 4, verse 2. And here, the Lord said to him, what is in your hand? And that's the title of our message this morning. He said, a staff. And he said, throw it on the ground. So he threw it on the ground, and it became a what? A staff snake a serpent and we are all familiar with those here and Moses ran from it but the Lord said to Moses put out your hand and catch it by the tail so he put out his hand and caught it and it became a staff in his hand that they may believe that who that Moses that the Lord the God of their fathers the God of Abraham the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob has appeared to you how many of you say amen for that you know, uh, from California, I've never seen a snake out in the wild. Uh, I was with my kids, and we went to the park by our house, and we were just playing, and we're going home, and all of a sudden, this snake just, boom, zooms right by us. And so like Moses, I tried to run, but I had my family with me, so I, I tried to grab them and carry them, and we, and we went together. But I had never seen a snake before in, in, in the wild. So this text might be very familiar to you guys from this year. But have you guys ever seen someone turn a hiking stick into a snake? We've seen snakes, right? How many of you guys have seen snakes just like walking around, just minding their own business, doing their thing? But have you ever seen someone turn a, a, a staff into a snake? Absolutely not. This is a miracle. This is a big deal. This is a big thing. So now the question for you guys today, who was this miracle supposed to glorify? Moses or God? Moses or God? God, right? This, the whole purpose of this, what God was trying to do with Moses was saying, if you want to lead my people, I want you to understand that it's not about you. 
If I want you to do big things, but it's not about you, Moses. It's not about you. Guys, family, friends, uh, people who are here today, I want you guys to understand that God has you here for a specific reason, and it's to reflect God's light and glory to the rest of the world. Can you say amen for that? About a year ago, I took this picture with my iPhone, and I zoomed in uh, because it was such a beautiful moon that day. And uh, I started thinking about the moon, right, because the moon was created by God. This, this, this big uh, moon was created by God. And the more I understand about the moon, and, the, and you know, I took a, a class in, in college about, you know, the, the solar system and things like that. And I, I began to realize that the moon doesn't have its own light. Did you guys know that? Who does it get the light from? The sun. Now, this bright object in the sky looks like it has its own light, but in fact, the light is from who? The sun. I find it so interesting that the, the, the moon understands its purpose. Its purpose is singular. Its purpose is very simple, very, very easy. It's to reflect the light from the sun, and it's to give us light during the night. That's its purpose. That's his, that's his whole thing. Now, the moon travels around what? The sun, right? The moon. No, I mean, yeah, the moon it travels around what? The earth, right? And it gives us light all through the night. Now, as you look up there, it could easily confuse us and say, well, that thing is so bright, that thing is so awesome. Let's, let's, and back in the ancient times, people used to, used to worship these things. They used to worship the sun, the, the moon, because they used to say like, hey, these things are bright, they're, they're powerful, they're big. But the fact is that these guys, this moon, shines the light from the sun. Don't you guys know that that's your purpose? That's your mission? Our mission and purpose is to be light reflectors of God. How many of you say amen for that? This becomes and makes our Christianity a lot easier. It means that it's not about me to produce my own light. It's not about me to produce my own things. It's not about me to produce my own salvation. It's about getting close to the Son of God. Amen? And let His light radiate onto my life and therefore shine our light to the rest of this world that is in need. First Peter 2.9, I believe that the Adventist people are a chosen nation. Do you guys believe that? But the problem comes when we think it's about us more than about God. Look at 1 Peter 2 9. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession. I believe every part of this. I believe that God chose us for a reason, right? And it, what's that reason? Is it just because, like, hey, let's just bring people to Adventism? Is that our purpose? What does the next part of the verse say? Because we stop there sometimes. We stop at that, at that verse and then we say, that's it. What does it continue saying? that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of what? Darkness into his marvelous light. That is our purpose as a church family. That's our purpose. That's, our, that's the reason why we exist. Yes, we are chosen. Yes, we are holy. Yes, we are royal priesthood. But the reason for our existence is not for other people to say, wow, Adventists, wow, Adventism. It's to say, wow, the God of the Adventists, the God that they serve, I'm so in, enamored with their, with their God. Our point and our purpose is to point people to Jesus. Amen? The problem with many of us Christians is that we begin to think it's about us. We begin to think it's about what I do or don't do. We start thinking that it's about going to the right church at the right day, at the right time. And those are all very important things, but it's not about that. It's about us being reflectors of God light, God's light into this dark, dark world. Do you guys want to know what the problem with Lucifer was? Do you guys know what, what his role it was in heaven? It was a covering cherub, right? And the name Lucifer means light bearer. Um, God created this perfect being for one specific purpose, and his purpose was to cover the throne room of, of, of God. Now, as a covering cherub, one of the things that would happen was that as his wings spread over the throne room, God's light and radiance would do what? Shine on him. And so, check this out. The, 
he was created for a specific purpose, like each one of us, which is to reflect God's light. And now all of a sudden, he's seeing this light and he's saying, whoa, this is pretty cool. I'm pretty bright. I'm pretty good looking. Look at me. And what did Lucifer begin to do? He started looking at himself. His purpose was to shine that light onto others. His purpose was to be so close to God that that radiance would shine off of him onto others. But the problem became when he started thinking that it was about who? About himself. And this is, this is the most dangerous things that we can do as human beings. Start to think that it's about us, that it's about me. Ezekiel 28, 17, talking about Lucifer. This is God speaking to Lucifer. Your heart became proud on account of what? Your beauty. God, he, God created him beautiful. And you corrupted your wisdom, wisdom because of your splendor. So I threw you out to the earth and made a spectacle of you before what? Kings. So what happened with Lucifer here in this story? His splendor began, to, he began to think that it was all about him, that it was about his light, and it was all about him. And so now that same light trickles down to us here on earth today. Have you guys seen it in your own lives? Have you seen it manifested in your, in your family? Have you seen it manifested in your role here at church? Have you seen it manifested where sometimes we're so focused on what am I going to show? What am I going to do? I'm not going to lie. I was nervous today. I haven't preached in about a year. <laughs> but I had to remember my own sermon and say, it's not about you, Javi. <laughs> it's about sharing God's light today. And so it, we can easily make it about us if we're not careful. We can easily make it about what am I doing? What am I going to do? How am I going to produce? How are they going to see me? But when we start focusing on Jesus, then his light begins to shine. John 8, 12. And Jesus spoke again to the people and he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I want you guys to see the, the sequence of this. Jesus is the light. We follow Jesus. Now we have light. You guys see that? The problem is when we do the reverse order, when we say we have the light, Jesus, you follow me. You come bless my plans, bless my thing, bless my marriage, bless this, bless that. You follow my plans. That's when we get into trouble. But what Jesus is saying here is I am the light. You follow me and you will also have light. How many of you say amen for that? It's so simple sometimes, but we complicate it. It's so simple sometimes, but we, we complicate Christianity. It's not about us. How can God use me as a light reflector of his glory? Maybe you're asking yourself that today. Like, hey, I have so many things. I, I talk to families all the time where they're like, you know what? I would never walk foot inside of a church because of my past, because of my present, because of what I'm doing. And it, my job at a, at a hospital is so beautiful, so amazing, because God meets them there. God meets them there in that place. He, he says, hey, hey, don't worry, you don't have to come over here. I come to you. And so many people always tell me when I was a pastor, no, 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 pastor, I can't help. I can't serve because, like, I got this going on and I got that going on. And I, and, and I can't be used by God. Moses did the same thing, and God said, hey, am I not the creator? Am I not the one who formed you? Am I not the one who, who built you? Am I not the one who created you? Why would you question the creator? So how can God use me as a light reflector of his glory? How can God use me? Exodus 4, 2, the Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? And Moses replied, a staff. I find this so interesting. I find this so, so interesting because uh, Moses had this staff with him all the time. It was an ordinary object. It was a thing for his craft. It was something he carried with himself all the time. This thing in his hand, and God points to it and says, hey, what's that thing that you've always had? What's that thing that you've also, almost like it's become a natural thing? It's that thing that day by day you use it, but you don't know what it's for. I love this about God that he questions or he gives us answers by giving us questions, right? And that's so frustrating sometimes. I'm like, God, just give me an answer. Just tell me what it is. And God's like, question after question after question. And so 
Here he says to Moses, what is that thing in your hand? And Moses is like, I'm disqualified. I can't do this. I can't do that. And God answers him by saying that thing that you've always had. You know, God has always asked that same question throughout the Bible. What's in your hand, David? He asked a little shepherd boy named David, what's in your hand, David? Just a slingshot. Good. I can use that to defeat giants. David, what's in your hand? Oh, just a pen. Good. I can use that to write beautiful psalms and hymns. David, what's in your hand? Oh, it's just a harp. Good. I can use that to produce beautiful music. David, what's in your hand? A crown. Good. I can use that to lead a nation. Noah, what's in your hand? Oh, just a building set. Good. I can use that to build an, ar build an ark for the salvation of humanity. Samson, what's in your hand? A donkey's jaw. Good. I can use that to defeat a thousand Philistines. Little boy, what's in your hand? Oh, just five bread and, and two fish. Good. I can use that to feed 5,000 women and children plus. Jesus, what's in your hand? This nail-pierced hand. Good. I can write the most beautiful love story ever written with that. Guys, I want you guys to get the picture. God uses ordinary people with ordinary things in their hands to do extra ordinary things. The question I have for you guys today, what's in your hand? What's in your hand? God is asking you that question today. What's in your hand? Is it the gift of cooking? Can you cook some, some mean, uh, I don't know, I like chili. Can you cook chili? Can you cook some tamales to my Mexican people here, to my Hispanic people? Can you make some tamales? I can use that. Voice, Dennis, you have such an amazing voice, man. <laughs> God has been using you so powerfully. Can you make crafts? Can you play an instrument? Can you be a friendly person who greets us every Sabbath? God can use you. Teacher Rachel, <laughs> she teaches our, our little ones over there. She teaches my children over there. God is using teacher Rachel with just the simple thing she says, like, here you go, God. And God says, I can use that for my glory. There's this mom at the hospital yesterday. I went to go pray for a kid who is getting a bone marrow transplant. This, this little baby, this little girl has cancer. And they invited me to do a blessing before they do the transplant. And uh, it's a very special moment because I get to pray over these families uh, and ask for God's healing over these cells that are transplanted into a kid's body. And, uh, you know, as I was meeting with the mom and I was talking to the mom, she, she pointed at this quilt that was against the, uh, the sofa. And it was a beautiful quilt that had like a huge horse on it. And she said, someone sent me this. Someone quilted this by hand for my daughter and put little strings and said that every little string was a prayer that that person did for this kid. And it was so moving, it was so touching, because th th it was like the horse that this girl has at home, and, and she quilted it on this, on this big, beautiful quilt and gave it to this family. And so I thought to myself, wow, she uses this gift that is, for some, is just, an, is just a hobby, right? But in God's hands, it can become more. Some of the things you are already doing, God can use it for bigger things. Some of the things that you think, well, it's just my hobby, it's just something I like to do, God can use that for even bigger things. So my question for you guys this morning is, what's in your hand? Maybe today you're saying, well, I can't think of anything good. Only bad things have been happening recently. I want to share this story with you guys of my little friend here, Noli. They call him Noli Poli. He's a, he's a, he's a warrior. He's a cancer warrior. Um, a year ago, he was in our ICU uh, at the hospital, and he was, according to his mom, the doctor came to him and said, like, ma'am, this is the sickest kid in our hospital. This kid was so sick. He, he looked so terrible. He was on ECMO. He was on so many life-sustaining technology. And I remember going into this room one day to, to be with the family and to pray with them and spend time uh, supporting them. And I remember walking into this room, and this kid was yellow. I'm talking about highlighter yellow. Have you guys ever seen The Simpsons? That type of yellow. This kid was so bad. It was, it was so 
and, and you know the mom I would look over to the mom and dad and they were just like they weren't they weren't even budging they were like smiling and like I'm like w- do you guys see the same thing I'm seeing like can you guys see the same thing and they said we trust God and I was like okay I was like um my my humanity kicked in there and I was like all right but I'm seeing something different all right let's trust God but I'm seeing this and so to make a long story short this kid Noli Noli Poli was on liver failure was um on the verge of of death and god saved this little boy right and so one of the things that started happening with this situation was that the mom would tell me you know i'm not gonna let the devil win here he wants to destroy our family he wants to destroy my kids he wants to destroy my children but let me tell you he is not going to win this battle whether this kid makes it or doesn't i am still gonna glorify god through this and so Uh, we started praying, right? She said, hey, uh, Chaplain Javi, can we go around the unit and start praying for all the children? I said, okay, but HIPAA rules uh, don't allow for us to know the room names and all that, so we can just silently walk around and pray. We did that, and it was kind of weird. People were looking at us funny, and so we said, hey, how about we pray for the whole hospital? Why don't we walk around the whole hospital praying silently for all the children here at the hospital? And so we started doing this weekly. We started going around praying and praying and praying, And the thing that struck me about this mom was that it wasn't just for Nolan, who was on the verge of death. It was about all the other kids. She wanted to pray for all the other children in the room. And so we started praying, and we would end at the chapel, and we would have a prayer there for every one of the kids at the hospital. And uh, she looked over to me and said, hey, why don't we start a prayer ministry here? Why don't we do something for the rest of the families? Like, this is so helpful for me. Why don't we turn this into a ministry? And so out of something terrible, out of something bad, out of something that the devil tried to use to destroy this family, God used it for good. And to this day, we've been a year with this prayer ministry at the hospital. And families have been coming and being prayed over and being supported spiritually, all because there was a a parent in the ICU who said, devil, you will not win this battle. And what God And what the devil tried to use for my demise, God is going to use it for good. Guys, I don't know this morning, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what is going on in your life. I don't know if you're like Moses saying, God can't use me. I'm I'm too old. I'm too little. Uh, I have too much sin in my life. I have too many things going on. I want to remind you this morning that God can use you. God can use your story. God can use your situation. God can use that thing that you've always had along, and God can use it. For his good. Age doesn't matter. Moses was in past his prime when God called him. Moses was way past his prime when God called him. I don't care if you're eight years old, God used a king named Josiah to lead his nation. I don't care if you're old or if you're little, God can use you today. Because God uses ordinary people with ordinary things in their hands to do extraordinary things. This morning, I want to invite each and every one of you, if, if you feel that God is calling you to serve him, if you feel that God is calling you to, to give him that staff that you have in your hand, that thing you have in your hand, and you're like, God, I don't know what. I don't even know how. I don't even know where to start. If you this morning have realized God can use me, and I hope each one of us can, can leave this place inspired by saying, God can use my situation. God can use me today. If that's you, I want to invite you to stand this morning. That talent, that gift, that bad situation that's happening in your life right now, if there's something going on right now that you're like, God, I I know I need to be a light in this world. I know I need to reflect your light. I just don't know how. I just don't know where to start. I just don't know where to go. I want this prayer this morning to be about you and about God showing you what it is that he wants you to do. And it might be starting your work. It might start with your family, being kinder to your kids, being kinder to your spouse. It might start at your school. Little guys here, I see a lot of children here. God can use you guys. God wants to use you. There's nothing that is out of God's reach. So this morning, let me pray for you as as we end this message. God, like Moses, we want to be used by you. Like Moses, we have some questions. We We don't know if you can use us. But you created us. You formed us. You gave us that thing that we already have.
Help us use it for your glory. Help us use it for your good. Help us use it for your kingdom. God, there are people here who are saying, I'm willing, I'm, I'm open, I'm ready. I want to be used. So God, speak to them. Give them that thing that they need to do. And it could be really, really small. It could be really, really tiny. But when we put it in your hands, it could become a big, giant thing. So God bless this beautiful church here in Glendale. Bless every member. Bless every person who is here visiting us. And God, let your kingdom come. Your will be done. In your name we pray. Amen.